hear you. Okay. Perfect. I invite you to please rise. Beloved in Christ, we are gathered together tonight to prepare our hearts for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, to meditate upon the mystery of his incarnation, and to receive with joy the message of our salvation. Drop down, O heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open and let salvation come forth. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only God Son to take our nature upon him and to be born of a pure virgin. Grant that we, who have been born of man, and made your children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit, through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the same Spirit be our honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs>
to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. She was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. The Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall be And they shall call his name Emmanuel. Which means God is with us. Let us pray. Almighty God, in choosing the Virgin Mary to be the mother of your son, you made known your gracious regard for the poor and the lowly. Grant us grace to receive your word in humility, and so to be made one with your son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. For what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Jesus. Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but he knew her not until she gave birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. A shoot shall come up from the stump of Jesse. And the, the Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, God from whom the Father and the servant David praise Joseph to be the God of the Son, and the spouse of his virgin mother, give us grace to imitate his uprightness of life and his obedience to your commands. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you. to worship him. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring word back to me, that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Arise and shine, for the light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth. And thick darkness the people. But the Lord will arise upon you. And as the Lord appears to you, let us pray. O God, by the living of the star, and manifest your own Son to the peoples of the earth, let us know you now by faith to your presence, where we may see your glory face to face. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God.
shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for you and all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up and do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have made yourself known in your Son, Jesus, into the kingdom of the world. We pray that his birth as a human child will set us free from the old slavery of our sins. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God. because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to a son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. You have enriched our lives with every good and perfect gift. You have commanded us to show your splendor to our children and to praise you with lives of love, justice, and joy. Be with us this night and bless this candle that it may be a visible sign of your saving grace and love in all our seasonal celebrations. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, to whom and with whom the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
unless you don't want to be a part of this. Somebody's going home with this tonight. Yeah, that reminds you of That's perfect. <laughs> Come on down. You don't have to walk. It's 9 o'clock tonight. We got to get home and go to sleep. Okay, you guys can sit on your keisters. Perfect. So guess what? During the summers, I take a vacation. I take a vacation. I like to go someplace with a lake. I like to swim. I'd love to tell you where that was at. But I can't because I met somebody there and he asked me not to tell you where he vacations because he likes to have some time off during the summers. I was swimming and I saw this guy swimming and I was like, I think I know who you are. You think you know who I was swimming with? You think you know? I'll give you a hint. He has a beard like mine except whiter. Santa Claus was on vacation swimming in a lake in the south in the same place I swimming. Now that's pretty exciting to go swimming with Santa Claus, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah? I had to ask him a question. Not just asking him, you know, how he gets around to all the houses and all that kind of stuff, how he makes time for a Christmas Eve service and the like, but I also asked him a big important question. What gift in his expertise would make somebody the absolute most happy this Christmas? It would make them happier than anything else. Absolute happy. You guys have some ideas what that might be? Close your eyes for just a minute. Let's do it. Close your eyes. Think for just a minute. What, what present would make you so happy this Christmas? You got it? What? What are you thinking of? Family. Family? Okay, well, that just saved those people, so take some <laughs> crap. <laughs> what are you guys thinking of? What do you think? Go ahead. Pokemon cards. Pokemon cards? <laughs> what else? What are we thinking? You got some ideas? Okay, we all want Pokemon cards. We've all agreed that that would be the best thing. So, I asked him if he would give me a gift that would make somebody the most happy. Now, I've only got one, so who would like to have it? Okay. Okay. But here's the thing. How do you guys know that I actually met Santa Claus while I was on vacation? Do you know? See, I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking, and I asked Santa, how are people going to know that you gave me a gift that would make them more happy than anything else? How would they know that I actually talked to you? And you know what he gave me to prove it? His swimming trunks. <laughs> you want to see him? Okay. <laughs> So that you would know that we went swimming together. But I've got to tell you, if you ever go to a lake and you see a man who looks like Santa swimming, proceed with caution. Because I've got his trunks. So, who wants to open it for us? Do we all want to work on it together? All right, let's just all work on this together. Go ahead. Start pulling on it. Let's get all this wrapping paper off you. Let's start with the wrapping paper. And then we'll figure out who's going to keep it later. Annie's going to help our cleaning staff after this is over. Okay, let me see if I get this right. What's in the box? Nothing. No, 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 no. There was something. There had to be something in here. No. What's awesome? Let's get a light. Maybe it's dark. Where's the light? Maybe it's invisible. Maybe it's invisible? Yeah, that would be really cool. There's nothing in here? Are we sure? Well, how could that be? I asked Santa to put whatever would make us most happy in this box. Go ahead. Feel for it then. If it's invisible, you could be able to touch it. Oh, it's, there's nothing in there. I think Occam's razor would suggest that there's nothing. Nothing could ever make you happy. Because that's kind of the trick. See, I'll bet Santa was trying to teach me a lesson. Here, let's sit back down. I bet Santa was trying to teach us an important lesson. You know what I think? I think the things that make us happy don't come in a box. No, you know what I mean? Up, in, in your heart. Thank you, right? Hey, could you guys tell me something? 
Do you remember all the things you wanted for Christmas last year? Do you remember all the things you got for Christmas? Do you have a long list in your brain? I have a list. You tell me about it. Um, my friend, um, a lion? Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> No, the truth is that even though you got tons of stuff for Christmas and you probably got tons of stuff for your birthday, you don't remember those things because those aren't the things that make us truly happy. Here's the thing, boys and girls, I need your eyes up here. On me, on me. Just let this empty, this is an empty box. Okay. Here we go. You will never find anything in a box or under a tree, or on a tree, any of your decorations, or any of the food you eat, those things will never make you happy. Because happiness doesn't come from the gift. No buts. It comes from the giver. Who gives us gifts? Santa Claus and your moms and dads, right? Our friends and who? And elves? In certain families, for sure. <laughs> what about grandmas and grandmas yeah. and, and, and friends? Lots of people give us gifts, but guess what? It's not the gift that makes us happy. It's the love that they share. This Christmas, you're going to have time with your family. Some of them flew in from other areas. Some of them traveled. Maybe you traveled. And I want you to remember this. What's going to make you happy this Christmas is the love you get to share with your family and the joy and the laughter and all of the fun. Yes, you get one more. Or if you're going to Indiana, that will be a long trip <laughs> on I-80. <laughs> and that will be wonderful. Boys and girls, I can't give you something that's going to make you happy. But I can tell you this. I can give you a hug. And I can tell you with that hug that I love you. I will always love you. I will always be here to love you. No matter what presents you get, no matter what other stuff, no matter what you think about that love when you get to confirmation, I will. <laughs> so, let me give you hugs and tell you I love you, and you can go back to your seats, okay? Would you like a hug? I know, I know they are. Here, let me, let me have some hugs. Let me tell you. I love you. Merry Christmas. I love you, sweetie. Merry Christmas. Okay, you can go back to your seats. I love you. Merry Christmas. I love you, sweetie. Merry Christmas. I love you. Merry Christmas, buddy. You, I, that's the one thing I do for free. Merry Christmas. I love you. And Merry Christmas, sweetie. I love you. So, as adults, we're going to take it a step further because we realize that. It's the joy of spending time with family, but I want you to look past that. It's not just our relationships, our friends, our family, our spouses, our children, our parents. Because those are gifts. Those two are gifts. Those are precious gifts. They're just the type of gift that keeps on giving. <clears throat> those all come from a giver as well. And in him we are thankful. Over this last season, we've been, uh, the Advent season, we've been talking about light. We've been talking about light as we light each one of our four candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. And it reminds me of some time I spent hunting and uh, camping out in Nevada. Uh, you know, have any of you spent any evenings out camping in the Nevada deserts? You know that the only things that are tall out there is your tent. <laughs> so it's kind of fun to grab your flashlight and in the nighttime. You start it up and you just let it go and point right to the sky. And it's a lot, it's lit. It's doing all those things that light does. It's got uh, brightness, it's got hue or uh, color, and it's got warmth, but it's not really doing what it's intended to do until you bring that thing down. And, yeah, I know, I'm a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Sleepers in the back. <laughs> gotcha, I see you. Yeah, until you bring it down, and then once you rest on something, the vibrance of the brightness comes alive and uh, the many hues and, and vitality of the, the color is seen in all of its beauty and then of course you feel the warmth of the light as it shines upon you. Light in scripture is a very regular theme. We find it all the way back in Genesis 1-1 when God says, let there be light. And even that light which gave light so that we could see our world and understand our world was also just in 
simile. It was just a reference to point to the light of God that was coming. You might be surprised to know that we're not the only ones made in the image of God in creation. So is light and the rest of creation. It was to bear testament about who God was. But light wasn't just made to show us creation. It was also pointing to a bigger truth that we, the creation, were made for the light. Like a flashlight that points up into a Nevada sky in the middle of the night isn't really showing much, even though it is light, until it lands on something, until it beholds something. Christ is the light of God that's come into the world to show the true nature and the will of God, to show us who he is and how he works and wants to relate to this world. But that was exactly the purpose of his creation. I thought a lot this week, I'm trying to figure out how to explain this to you, but it comes so simply like this. You were made for this moment. No matter where you've been, no matter where you're going. For what we celebrate tonight and tomorrow, our purpose in existence is to be that which the light of Christ shines upon. And I tell you that because sometimes in the dark, things get scary. When I was a kid, I used to get scared in the dark in my room. I would, I'm a weirdo. I would try to close my eyes and picture all of the superheroes that I would name one by one. Ninja Turtles, sometimes Transformers. I'd even add Barbies if they seemed fierce. And I'd line them around my room thinking, okay, they're going to keep me safe. Because sometimes in the dark we get scared. Sometimes the shadows tell us something's there that's not there. Sometimes we think there's things lurking right around the corner or right under the bed, ready to grab us or to keep us in the dark forever. Sometimes we even think that we're not worthy of the light. And I'm telling you, you were made to be that which the light of Christ shines on. You were made to display the brilliance of his love. To be the point of his joy, his delight. It says in Zephaniah that he rejoices over you with singing. He quiets you with his love. You were made to be the point of hope and peace. In his faithfulness. See, you know John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. See, if God was willing to go to such lengths to make sure that you would stay in the light from this day to life everlasting. That he would send his only son to live a, a perfectly obedient life. To then pay for the sins of the world by dying an innocent death. Only to find that death could not hold him and he would raise to life. If he was willing to go to those lengths to keep you his. And in his light. Then you know that his faithfulness will see you through whatever comes and whatever has been. In his faithfulness, we have hope for the future. In his faithfulness, we have peace. The prophet Isaiah said in 26.3, he will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast because he trusts in you. And that light of God and the will of Christ reveals that. His faithfulness is displayed in all of you, in your friends, in your family, in the way we spend and share this time together. That's why the prophet said, Isaiah again in 60, Arise and shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, thick darkness the peoples. It's a dark world out there. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And this is wild. And nations shall come to your light and to the kings, to the brightness of your rising. You are made to reflect the light of Christ, to live in his joy as he delights in you, to live in his love as he has given everything for you, to find peace and hope in his promise, to know that you are so cherished and beloved by his father. Share that light with the gifts God has given you. Share that light with the people you share this holiday with. Love them in the love of Christ. The 
they may know it's warm. Share that joy and laughter so that they may know the delight of the vibrance of the colors of this life. Share that hope and that peace in forgiveness and life together as we wait in the hope of the Lord's return in glory. As we go on through this service, we're going to light candles. We're going to sing Silent Night. Each one of us is going to hold that candle. I pray that as you hold it, you're reminded that Christ's light shines on you and lives within you. And as you blow it out, you're taking it with you into this season and into this next year. According to the gracious and blessed work of our Lord Jesus Christ, in his most precious name. Amen. Joining together with the other faithful who have worshipped already this day and the nations around the world who worship in one accord, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we confess the faith in unity together. I invite you to please rise as we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God and Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living.
rise. Let us pray. Lord of Christmas, we are mindful of the supreme gift which you gave us in the manger of Bethlehem. Humble we offer our gracious service and possessions and joyful thanksgiving for the love of your son. Accept these gifts for the sake of your son who was born to us, Jesus Christ our Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John, who came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth.
as you know, we're a Lutheran church, extended from Germany. It's a pleasure to get to sing with our brothers and sisters throughout the generation in their tongue. And it would be a very silent night without the blessed help and serving of all of our musicians who have come and so graciously worked hard to prepare. We want to say thank you for leading us in worship tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And let us pray. Almighty God, you have made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. For your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thank you. 